Before we see anything, we hear the ticking of a clock. I like to interpret this as a reminder of how important our time is on this earth. Time spent with loved ones in particular. With the first frame being of Sarah waking up to a Joel hung up at work, it really emphasizes this point. Of course, the clock ticking is a nod to Sarah's last gift to Joel before she dies. And finally, before going beyond the first few seconds of the game, our first frame is Sarah, who wasn't in any promotional material, immediately filling us with dread. I mean, this is it's what? nice, but I, I think it's stuck. It's not... What? No, 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 no. Oh, ha, ha. Though Joel's busy, he's got the dad stuff down. Where did you get the money for this? Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Oh, good. We started helping out with the mortgage then. Love that Joel doesn't truly question where she got the watch. Probably just happy to have a new watch. Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Joel seems to be struggling with a job right now, which means most likely money too. So, Sarah giving career advice? The Last of Us theme coming in as Joel puts Sarah to bed, but in a simple, sweet, stripped down version. Too bad Sarah won't be among the last of them. Sarah's wearing the colors of the Argentina flag in her soccer uniform. Most likely a nod to Gustavo Santalaya, being that Argentina was his birthplace. Also, her number is 14, which is how old Ellie is when Joel meets her. And lastly, her soccer team's name is The Defenders, which is fitting as Sarah most likely defended Joel emotionally after what happened to him with her mom, but also defended him from letting others in after her death. And like, it's the most basic soccer team name you can have, so it's perfect. The locations on the back of Sarah's band tee harbor a lot of locations visited in the game. The ones on the right side in particular. Sarah rips Joel a new one for his mistakes in her car to him, but she loves him nonetheless. We all know where the game is heading, but it's cool having the paper foreshadowing the infection, with some explanation about its transmission. There seems to be some commotion coming from the- Get the hell out of here, bro! Uh, what was that? Having the explosion happen so close to the window right as we see it on the TV is an effective way to make the player and Sarah feel the urgency of the situation. And her subtle animation change lets us know that she's not some hard little girl. This is some scary shit. Jimmy! Dad? Don't do it. It's small, but having Sarah actually move around the car as you move the camera is a nice touch. Let's see what they need. What do you think you're doing? Keep driving. I got a kid, Joel. So do we. But we have room. Hey. Keep hey, driving, stop. Tommy. Here's a little hint that it wasn't entirely Sarah's death and the infection that made Joel the man he is. He always had the ruthlessness inside of him. I'm from the Midwest, so maybe I'm lucky. But with gas prices that high, I'd be glad for gas to come free soon. I really like the subtlety behind naming the gas station Texan. Ah yes, my favorite restaurant, the Donut Donut. And in case you missed the gas station, we're in Texas. Evidenced by this theater being called The Armadillo. So, we've got a lot of fun references on the theater's board. First, we've got a nod to Jurassic Park and The Last of the Mohicans. We've got two movies that sound like Contagion movies, but also Under Your Skin could be in reference to Ellie when she first meets Joel. Then there's Vindictive, which is either a Vin Diesel movie or some amazing foreshadowing to Ellie's revenge quest on Abby. Then there's basically a nod to any samurai movie, just pick your poison. Then Damocles Rising. The story of Damocles is about those that are in power or always face peril. The Fireflies are on the verge of being wiped out when we meet them, and the Pittsburgh Fedra Zone had an uprising. And to make sure that everyone knows that we're in Texas, this dude's bald spot is shaped just like it. Not even a serious game like this can avoid not doing the Wilhelm scream. Sir, there's a little girl. But... Yes, sir. Somebody we've just been through hell. Okay, we just need... Following orders, uh, I guess. Oh no. Sarah. Move your hands, big. I know, baby, I know. I've never played a game that got me crying in the first 25 minutes. Not okay, baby, one. It's done so perfectly well on all levels of production. You could probably take the music out and it would hit about just as hard. But throw it in and you've got yourself a masterpiece of an opening. And this moment between Sarah and Joel wasn't some one and done ordeal of amazing actors doing their jobs. This took take after take to get right. And then a revisit weeks later. Watching the behind the scenes of these two try and work through the scene makes me appreciate actors so much more. And something amazing that I learned from this is the same thing Troy Baker did. Not always is a scene great because an actor method their way into the character's shoes and feel what they are. A better way sometimes is to follow very specific directions and being able to pull off exactly what the director wants. 
which is what happened here in this scene. Neil told Troy to hit a certain five beats while holding Sarah. And after that take, we've got the brilliant scene I've been playing on repeat. The number of confirmed deaths has passed 200. The pandemic spreading montage is a great breather for the player after what we just went through and some good catching us up on the fall of the civilized world. <sighs> I like to imagine that what we just played through is a recurring nightmare that Joel has, just replaying it over and over again. It's morbid, I know, but that headcanon makes me feel more connected to Joel. Well, I have some interesting news for you. Where were you, Tess? West End District. Hey, we had a drop to make. We. We had a drop to make. Well, you wanted to be left alone, remember? We learn so much about Tess and Joel's relationships through their back and forth. Never do we get some flat out exposition about the relationship to each other. It all has to be inferred. That's great. It forces the player to pay attention, but also gets us engaging with the game, trying to discern what and who they are to each other. Can't say for how long though. Well, I'm ready now, yeah? Oh, I can do now. Why wouldn't the contractors want a guy like Joel? The man hasn't even had a cup of coffee and he's ready to go to work. What about you, Joel? You been summoned for this bullshit yet? Nope. Wow, didn't know that Joel met Abby before she played golf with his head. Joel walking through this quarantine zone is a nice visual way to get acquainted with the civilized sections of the world. The best being these two gunned down without a blink of an eye. Hey Tess, you see that shit? I was there. Hey, how's the East Tunnel looking? Yeah, it's clear. Tess so obviously runs the show around this area. Everyone refers to her first and respects her. Ain't been out here in a while. It's like we're on a date. Well, I am the romantic type. Got your ways. I dig all the allusions to something romantic between Joel and Tess. Hey, little man. Make sure the coast is clear. No soldiers, none of Robert's men, yeah? When we heard Tess mention enough ration cards to last us a couple months, I'm sure most of us assume food. Nope, she needs them for business. Bitch, I will bash your skull unless you turn around and get your dumb ass out of here. Fuck this. Love that Tess doesn't give a fuck. How do you know they're coming? Two of our guys died trying to take Tess out. I guarantee that she and Joel are on their way here right now to get Robert. So they were actually Robert's sure. men. Love that they don't really care. It's complicated. Hmm. Look, One glance from Tess and Joel knows exactly what to do. Love shit like this that builds history between characters. We could just, just go in there, finish them off, we get the guns, what do you say? And taking on the Fireflies is exactly what Joel does in the end. That is a stupid idea. Joel doesn't even flinch when Tess shoots Robert. I need something smuggled out of the city. You do that, I'll give you your guns back. Then some. We find out that then some is just double the payment, but maybe she's also talking about the cure. Is that your people? What's left of them? Why do you think I'm turning to you guys? Because they are the Han Solo and Chewbacca of this world, right? I want Joel to watch over her. Whoa, whoa, I don't Bullshit, think that's the best Ellie. him. And that's exactly what he does, till the day he dies. Just take her to the North Tunnel and wait for me there. Jesus Christ. Just cargo, Joel. Tess knows about Joel's past and trying to keep his feelings out of this deal, equating Ellie to cargo. So where are your parents? <sighs> where are anyone's parents? <laughs> Mood. I don't know the best thing about my job. I don't gotta know why. Keeping things simple. Your watch is broken. <laughs> and I'm sure he's never complained about it since it did. Of course, leave it to Ellie to be the first one to bring it up since Sarah's death. Can't be any worse out there. Joel knows exactly how much worse it can get, and this look shows it all. TA. Couple minutes. Sorry. Next time you're going to do something like that, tell me first. With doctors, they're still trying to find a cure. Yeah, we've heard that before, huh, Tess? Explains why they don't bite for one second. Oh, I'm sure she did. Hey, fuck you, man. I didn't ask for this. I love how headstrong Ashley Johnson helps turn Ellie into. Ellie has always been more capable than your average kid, but once Ashley showed up, things really started changing for the better. Do I need to remind you what is out there? I get it. And again, Tess knows exactly what Joel's hang up on this job is, and I love that it's a look and three words that convey this. Yeah. What's wrong with his face? Yeah. That's what years of infection will do to you. Cool that we got our fish out of water with Ellie to have our experienced characters explain the world to her slash us. I gotta throw a win in for the infection design. Having it being based off a real fungus that infects ants has gotta be one of the cooler ideas for a zombie story. And having a sort of ecology with them as they age and the infection takes over more and more of their body is sweet. You got something on your shoe. 
<laughs> this runner's blocking is consistent with her bite mark later. Now watch your step as you're going out, because it's going to be a little... <laughs> Fucking kids. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. But man, you can't deny that view. Come on, this way. This is the first time that Joel really opens up to Ellie. And hey. with this cheeky smile and glance at his watch, it's obvious she's already making an impression on him. Look, we're almost done. Stay focused. Yes, ma'am. Joel seems a little annoyed that he can't just enjoy a moment. A good reminder that he's got a little humanity left in there. Guess what? We're shitty people, Joel. It's been that way for a long time. No, we are survivors. This is our chance. To be good people. Test. To do something right. Our luck had to run out sooner or later. Are you going on? No, don't! Don't touch me. Holy shit. Of course Ellie would understand more than Joel about what Tess is going on about. She's been bit herself. I am not doing that. Yes, you are. Look. There's enough here that you have to feel some sort of obligation to me so you get her to Tommy's. So sad about how relationships develop in this type of world. Both too scared to commit to each other completely out of fear of losing the other. But that's kind of what makes everything more beautiful. The fact that we're all doomed to die is what gives life meaning. Make this easy for me. No, no, just go! Just fucking go. Joel doesn't know what to do. He's in shock. This reaction tells me she is the only thing he's let close since he and Tommy split. Copy that. How the hell are you breathing in this stuff? I wasn't lying to you. Well, anyone who had reservations has no excuse now but to believe her. Here's how this thing's gonna play out. You don't bring up Tess. Ever. Secondly, don't tell anybody about your condition. And lastly, you do what I say when I say it. Repeat it. Okay, Dad. Good chance he could get us a car. Okay. Let's get a move on. Ellie often will grab her left ring finger when she's feeling some anxiety. It's a small tick that Ashley brings to Ellie, but it's always the small things that come together to make brilliant art. These woods are gorgeous. I know this is a remaster, but damn, this game holds up so well. Kid, I don't mean to upset you, but your friend's chances of survival weren't too high to begin with. She's a lot tougher than you think. It don't matter. It doesn't. I mean, look, Tess just died, and she was hard as fuck. And looking ahead, Joel dies too. Man, must be hard. Just leaving all your stuff behind like that. That ain't the hard part. Remember, folks, materialism is a one-way ticket to unhappiness. <laughs> Damn it, Bill. Wish there were more set pieces like this, since, like, this game is coming from the team that made Uncharted. But even with that said, the few that are here are nice. Uh, Ellie. Hey, what are you... Sneaky, sneaky, Bill. Who the fuck is this punk and what's she doing here? I am none of your goddamn business, and we're here because you owe Joel some favors. And oh. you can start by taking these off. Ellie's no pushover, and I love it. Huh? Yeah, sure, Joel. Go ahead. Take my card. Take all my food, too, while you're at it. By the looks of it, you could lose some of that food. <laughs> Listen to me, you little shit. <laughs> but after this, I owe you nothing. That's fine. A couple of days from now, we'll probably be dead anyway. Good. <laughs> I know he's not saying good to them being dead in a couple of days, but it damn well sounds like it. Let's stay right on my ass. Can't miss it. Knock it off. <laughs> Bobby Fisher, don't touch anything on that board. Bobby Fisher was actually the youngest ever U.S. chess champ, and his story kind of coincidentally matches up with Ellie's. He became strange after a big event occurring in his life, just like Ellie, and was threatened by his own people to not do something. Okay, maybe I'm reaching here, but I'm still gonna win it. <laughs> that little brat. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you too. <laughs> If I didn't know any better, I'd think he's actually enjoying Ellie's company. So, why don't you fix one of these cars? Oh my god, you're a genius. I mean, the whole time, why on earth hadn't I thought about fixing one of these cars? Okay, don't be a dick. Ha <laughs> ha Bill's Town is hands down the funniest stretch of the game. Taking all the supplies from the warehouse okay. and into the well, east fence again. Uh, then, it'll take Bill. you... Bill! Joel! You picked a hell of a place to hold up, didn't you? You know, as bad as those things are... Normal people that scare me. You of all people should understand that. What does that mean? Yeah, I bet. Joel seems normal, but he can and will kill everyone that gets in his way. As long 
as he hasn't forgotten his survival instincts. Are you sure that gate's gonna hold him? Well, I locked it. They don't have a key. God, he's such an ass, and I love it. How in the hell is Tess okay with this suicide mission? It's actually her idea. Really? Well, the broad's not as smart as I thought she was. Joel didn't like that dig one bit. Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about. And he's actually surprised that Bill ever cared about someone. It's the little things like this that inform somebody us about the other after. characters. Somebody I had to look after. And in this world, that sort of shit's good for one thing. Getting you killed. Exhibit A. So you know what the Last of Us Part 2. Just fixing your stupid pile. Don't touch. Ellie might curse like a big girl, but she doesn't know how to flip the bird like one yet. You keep babysitting long enough and eventually it's gonna blow up in Bill. your face. Exhibit A Part 2. The Last of Us Part 2. Can we please just get on with it? Here. Let's get on with it. This interaction feels real similar to Tess telling Joel to stay focused. Joel, you are keeping an eye on her, right? Like a hawk. Seems that Elliot covert training three when Joel was meant to be keeping an eye on her. Maybe you should have given her a gun. Okay, Bill. God damn it, Bill. I love this here. You got friends in town? <laughs> no. Although I got some idea he might have come through here. School's on the other side of this house. I can't be the only one that thinks this house looks just like Clementine's house from Telltale's The Walking Dead, can I? You've always got to have a gas type in every zombie story. And furthermore, tell Tess that she could take Don't this you job. Tess she can shove it, it right up nothing to do with Jesus. What, you know this guy or something? Frank. Who the hell's Frank? He was my partner. I'm sure by now, we all know that Bill was romantically involved with Frank. And Naughty Dog treats this relationship the respect it deserves, not focusing on the fact that Bill likes dudes, but what this one dude meant to him, and how it's changed him. And that's what's really important. You're doing a good job. I figured you should know that. Joel's slowly softening up on Ellie. Assurance. Keep your foot on the clutch. And when we get to I know how to pop a clutch. How the hell do you? you know what? I don't care. Just don't fuck it up. All right, Ellie, get ready. I love that the two completely trust Ellie to pop the clutch on the truck. You ain't gonna make it. I mean, none of us are in the end, right, Bill? I'm gonna give Naughty Dog the benefit and say this was some foreshadowing to the second game. But this here is not a bad read. Only one problem. Right there. To be continued. I hate cliffhangers. Just like the end of this game. Love cliffhangers. Where did you get that? Uh, back at Bill's. I mean, all this stuff was just lying there. <sighs> what else did you get? The truck scene is great because it really has nothing to do with plot, but everything to do with story. We need more games to have scenes like this. It's the relationships between the characters we remember, not them driving across the country and fighting to get a cure to save the world. The song that's playing is Hank Williams' I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive, which is basically a song about no matter what we go through, good or bad, we're all gonna die in the end. Whoa! How, how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. <laughs> Please. Holy shit. Help. Are we going to help him? Put your seatbelt on, Ellie. Well, what about the guy? He ain't even hurt. <laughs> Joel's been around the block, and him recognizing this ambush just keeps upping his badass level. And here during the fight is another Hank Williams song called Alone and Forsaken, which can apply to so many things in the world of The Last of Us. This song is about what happens when all love leaves, and it seems right now, you get people like the Hunters. What do you know? About what? About the ambush. I've been on both sides. Oh. Well, now we know how we knew about the ambush. But more importantly, Ellie's small O is perfect. Unsure of what to make of it all. Oh, good. Something else he can drive me crazy with. This is a cute beat for her as she's been trying to whistle the whole game. Excuse me. 
A comic I've been reading. Here's our first Endurance Survive comment made by Ellie. I'll come back to this. I'm all right! Are you okay? No! You scared the shit out of me! <laughs> and you just hang back like I told you to. Well, you're glad I didn't, right? I'm glad I didn't get my head blown off by a goddamn kid. Joel's not more upset that Ellie could have gotten hurt, but that she was forced to kill somebody. Something I know a father wouldn't want their kid to have to go through. We need to get back out, find that bridge. Oh, I hate this crap. Me too, Joel. He probably had to deal with this type of stuff with Sarah. You stay here. This is so stupid. We'd have more of a fucking chance if you let me help. I am. You reckon you can handle that? First a truck, now a rifle. Joel's finally letting Ellie cover him. And just so we're clear about back there, it was either him or me. Apologizing without saying the word sorry. How about something uh, a little more your size? About damn time. Now, now the safety's on. Uh, do, you, do you know how to switch it off? I do. Okay, you just you gotta respect it. This is not. Good. Okay. Joel really could be such a dad sometimes to her before he even realizes how much she means to him. But like, he's also right. Guns are kind of scary. What? Oh, and a comic book thing. Endurance survived too. Joel? Joel, stop! Henry's tough. Normally, that many punches from Joel kills a man. Leave him alone. You can see Sam's hands shaking. Great attention to detail with this character. Oh, man, you hit hard. Man, well, I was trying to kill you. In a city with nobody but people that want to kill you, I don't blame Joel for being so standoffish. Naughty Dog put their own games in this game store. How old are you? Me? 14. How old are you? Uh, the same? Oh, you're 14, huh? <laughs> oh, I think Sam's got a bit of a crush. That could work. Oh, it'll work. Confidence. Wow. <laughs> Oh All right, ready? Oh. Ow! <laughs> a blueberry hurt you? It's been a while since that boy even cracked a smile. This cheeky little smile. We stick together. Of course, Ellie jumped down to help Joel. No time to argue! Ellie! Uh, damn it! Uh, and of course, Ellie jumped down to help... Joel. <laughs> Even through all the chaos of the raging water, Joel makes a conscious effort to flip around and protect Henry. Ellie from the rock. He's pissed, but he's not gonna do anything. You sure about that? Stop! Joel? Seems that Sam hit puberty when he tells Joel to stop. I guess I'd grow up real quick if my brother was under threat of death. Coming back for you meant putting him at risk. Stay back. If it was the other way around, would you have come back for us? Henry's logic all evens out in the end, I guess. I like that Naughty Dog splits the party like this, ramps up the anxiety of the situation. Move it! And it's a good way to show how soft Joel has become with Ellie through the way he talks to Sam. Look at this. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Does this remind anyone of The Walking Dead's Don't Dead open inside? Joel can't kill dogs. That's how we know he's a good person, right? I'm gonna go around and see if I can't get the angle on him. Joel taking a page out of Tess's book. There are not too many crazy set pieces you can do in a grounded world like this, but this sniper one is a nice attempt. Nice of the hunters to let us know what we should be doing when their car approaches. Anybody hurt? Uh -oh. No, we're good. I think it's time we quit this place. If you pay attention to Sam, you can see it all over his face that he was bitten. Seen it in my dreams. <laughs> okay. It's so nice to watch these characters get to have a moment of peace together after all they've been through. Worst part about it all. Explaining to Sam. Henry and Sam create a great foil to Joel and Ellie's relationship. Joel treats Ellie much more like an adult than Henry with Sam, and it could be argued that that is why he got bit. I'm scared of ending up alone. Ellie's greatest fear of ending up alone makes the second game even more tragic, and that is exactly what happens to her. What if the people are still inside? What if they're trapped in there without any control of their body? If you go through notes lying around about the infected, at least at the early stages, it's true that the person becomes an idle passenger as the infection takes hold of their body. Think the sunken place and get out. All the serious talk. I almost forgot. Ah, oh, this is sweet. And if you're super sneaky, you can catch her picking it up in the store. Sam. 
Henry? Henry, stay there. Henry! What have you done? I'm gonna get that gun from me, okay? Oh, okay, okay, easy. This is your fault. This is nobody's fault, Henry. It's all your fault! Henry! Henry, no! <laughs> This scene has got to be the top three shocking and heartbreaking scenes in the game. It gets me every time, and the focus on Joel's reaction is perfect. We don't need to see Henry blow his brains out, but we need to see how this affects Joel. We just had a bit of a disagreement, that's all. Tommy saw the world one way, I saw the other. I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm in love with these moments of Joel opening up to Ellie. This seems like a deep wound that he wouldn't just tell anyone about. I need you to... I know. Up on the fucking pallet. Ellie is a girl after our hearts. Teamwork. Yeah. This little high five is so cute and I'm glad I haven't missed it in my five plus playthroughs because it would make me feel awful. Story time. Back in Assassin's Creed 2 when you meet Leonardo in Venice, you get a QTE to hug him and I, I missed know, it my first time. I felt so bad, I reloaded a save from two hours ago just so I could redo that moment in Hug Leo. Let's get past this place, then we can scrounge up some food. Well, if I starve, you're responsible. I mean, yeah, it's up to the parent to feed the child. These two are already there, they just don't know it yet. Earl? Yeah? Why are you here? Weren't you supposed to head back this morning? Still waiting on Hauser and the rest of the boys to relieve me. Oh, no, you know, we'll be fine. Just go home to your family. It's just a couple more hours. I'll tough it out. All right, well, take it easy. This little interaction is a great way to show how amazing the community Tommy and Maria have built here, and lovely contrast to the hunters. Here. It's a little faded, but it still looks pretty good. I'm good. You sure? I mean... I said I'm good. I feel weird winning this moment as it's so sad, but this is a very powerful moment to show even with how much he's opened up, he still wants to bury the pain and not face it. Have Maria get some of your born-again friends to do it. They got I... families too. Tommy, I need this. First, he can't accept the photo, and now doing everything he can to get rid of her because he knows what's going to happen to him if he keeps going down the road, and it terrifies him. You lay your hands on me again, it won't end well for you. Love that someone steps to Joel, and he can't do anything about it. Oh, they were coming in from every direction, and then Maria was like, we gotta run, and so we dove over these tables, and this huge guy blasted with a shotgun. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Listen, then... hey, hey, are you hurt? No. God damn it. It's great that we see these two have this conversation from Tommy's perspective. It highlights the love they already have for each other so poignantly. And it's this moment, seeing his brother care for someone like this again, that he makes the choice to take Ellie. And I like to believe that he's only willing to do it to get his brother back. Tommy knows what Joel lost. Remember, Tommy said, my cause is my family now. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. This has got to be one of the best scenes in the entire game. I well up every time don't I watch it. It's just so fucking tragic that Joel is the one person Ellie has and is basically begging him not to go. And Joel's fear is still not letting her in. I, f I, I feel a mountain of words that I want to say about this scene, but there's nothing more I can come up with to describe the raw emotion and inhumanity the scene oozes. And I think that's the best part about it. It's just how real it is. Our separate ways. Get it together. We're not alone. This has got to be the most awkward thing for Tommy to bust in on. <laughs> what are you doing? Your wife kind of scares me. <laughs> I don't want her coming after me. <laughs> A perfect excuse, Joel. You good? I'm good. That's so sweet. Joel finally accepts his feelings for her. Right, it's called turnover. And if you clear the 10 yards, then you're back at first down? First down, that's right. Yeah, that's confusing. And we get to start the next chapter with such a simple conversation. God, sometimes I forget it's just the little things like that it makes us so human. Right when I was a kid, I used to want to be uh, a singer. <laughs> Shut up. I'm serious. Sing something. Uh, no. Come on, I won't laugh. I don't think so. Joel. Please. And we finally get the payoff of him singing to her in the next game. Alright, not what I had in mind, but it'll do. Using dumpster to climb over an object subversion. Well, maybe in all that research, they turn into fucking monkeys. 
<laughs> I love that Joel does the little exhale through the nose laugh. It's awesome that this injury happens through an unwinnable QTE. Makes the player feel so much more helpless, just like Joel. Alright, just stay here. If it wasn't for Joel trusting Ellie and teaching to defend herself, she wouldn't have been able to get them out of there alive. Imagine if it was Sam that had to get Joel to the horse. Oh, get up, get up, get up. You gotta tell me what to do. Come on. Oh, the helplessness is so heartbreaking, but you don't get stronger without a little pain, right? Oh, look at the cute little bunny. Oh. Hey, look, we're playing as Ellie, even though Nutty Dog lied to us in the marketing many times that we never would. It's like they did what they did to make this moment more impactful for the player. Just like another game they made. They're from a larger group. Women, children. They're all very, very hungry. So am I. Women and children. All very hungry too. Haha, <laughs> that's perfect. Weapons. Ammo. Clothes. Medicine. Hearing Ellie say medicine is such a relief for the player. Ellie checks the chamber to make sure there is a round in it before she uses it to hold up David. What's your name? Why? A good question when you live in a world like this. <laughs> Everything they do with David until the reveal is the perfect way to get us to trust him. Saving Ellie here, defending against the infected, David saying they make a good team. All of it. And everything happens for a reason. Sure. I do. And I can prove it to you. And get this, he's a crazy man traveling with a little girl. But it all comes crumbling down in this haunting story, and the slow burn reveal of it is so perfect. Don't get upset. It's not your fault. I'm just a kid. Pragmatism. Ellie's so sweet, giving Joel the mattress and blanket and all. I mean, she's literally doing everything to save his life, which is pretty sweet too, but the little things like this is nice. And look, she's covering Joel. Oh, that little hand touch. Her telling him it's all gonna be okay. I hate to give kudos to this creep, but David was smart to let her go, then track her down. If you notice, Ellie moves the dumpster slower than Joel. You're a fucking animal. You say as you get down on all fours and eat with your hands. Convince him of what? That you can come around. You have heart. You're loyal. And you're special. And on top of him being an asshole, he's a fucking creep. So, good setup on wanting to murder him. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Ellie. Tell him that Ellie is the little girl that broke your fucking finger. And she stays true to herself. <sighs> Ellie. When you love someone, you will fight through hell to save them. And through the winter chapter, both of these characters do just that. You wait here. Yeah, Joel, I don't think he's going anywhere. She's alive. She's David's newest pet. Fun fact, the kneecap guy is Nolan North, who also plays David. Oh. I warned you. I'm infected! I'm infected! <laughs> Ellie's not the strongest, so she's got to rely on her wit to get out of the situation. <laughs> I say it all the time, but Naughty Dog not showing us David's face and being butchered makes it much more brutal because we can only imagine. Stop! Stop! Fucking touch me! Look, it's me! It's me! It's me! Look, look! It's me. He tried to. Oh, baby girl. It's okay. God, Gustavo is so brilliant with this score. The music here is choppy and unnerving until Ellie sees that it's Joel and they embrace for the first time. Then it smooths out and has a much more relaxing tone. Oh, baby girl. It's okay. And Joel calls her baby girl, just like Sarah. And, and, this embrace is given all the time and weight it deserves. And, 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 I love that they cut out the dialogue here. It doesn't matter what they're saying. What matters is this moment of unity and love that they are sharing. 
Ellie is staring at a deer, which for her is representative of so many different things for her now. Her encounter with David, saving Joel's life, the full acceptance of the love these two share. It makes sense that in the second game, we see her sketching it all the time. Look, hospital. This is where we get off. Let's go, kiddo. Joel has officially entered dad mode. I tell you, on a day like this, I just sit on my porch, pick away my sex tray. And he finally gets to have that moment the night before he died. With how heartbreaking it is to see him go, I like to think that Joel died happy because of Ellie and Tommy. Feel that breeze, huh? I'm gonna teach you how to play guitar. Another abandoned quarantine zone. There's that hospital the Firefly mentioned. Maybe we cut through here, huh? Joel's talkative ass and Ellie's silence is a great reversal of when they first met, but also very indicative of how traumatic winter was for her. Here we go. Ellie. Ellie. What? The ladder. Come on. Right. Using tried and true gameplay elements is always a great way to enhance what is happening in your story. Come here, come here. Hey, uh, hurry up. Come on. Come on. Hey there. After the horrors of winter, we get to have this one beautiful moment with the giraffes. So, is this everything you were hoping for? Got its ups and downs, but you can't deny the view, though. Callback, and what a beautiful response from Ellie. You can't deny that view. You can't deny this moment. And you can stare at this view for as long as you like. You, the player, have to move the stick to continue going. Be done with this whole damn thing. It can't be for nothing. The look on Joel's face here says it all. It wasn't for nothing. He finally can love again, and he's horrified that whatever happens with the fireflies will take her away from him. And the lingering on that last giraffe leaving the frame is a good reminder that things are only beautiful because they don't last. We'll go wherever you want, okay? Well, I ain't leaving without you. And he fucking meant it. Maria showed this to me and I, uh, I stole it. I hope you don't mind. How hard you try. I guess you can't escape your past. <laughs> Thank you. Through Ellie, he's finally ready to accept that Sarah's gone and ready to accept the picture of her. This is quite the last gauntlet of infected to go through. I couldn't imagine having to figure out how to do this on the harder difficulties. Right. Endure and survive. Now Joel's saying endure and survive whenever before he thought it was silly. It comes in thirds, people. Ellie's always jumping down to save Joel for a third time now. Hands in the air! She's not breathing. Joel's own life doesn't matter to him anymore because without her, he's got nothing to live for. A vaccine. But it grows all over the brain. It does. Find someone else. There is no one else. What a situation to put Joel into. When he lost his first daughter, he didn't get a say in it, but now he does. And there's no option but to kill everyone to save her. I knew her since she was born. I promised your mother I would look after her. Then why are you letting this happen? Because this isn't about me, or even her. There is no other choice here. And there is another choice, Marlene. Game theory proves that vaccines don't work on fungal infections, so, um... Get fucked, asshole. Say keep walking. This disarm from Joel is saucy as hell. First, we had a gauntlet of infected, and now we got one for humans. And it's tough as shit. No! Fucking animal! Terry, shut the hell up! It's perfect that you have to kill the doctor. This game isn't about the player. This story is about Joel and Ellie and what he, and what these characters are going to do. Oh shit. It's 
The same track that plays during Sarah's death plays while Joel is running with Ellie. And it parallels the start when he was carrying Sarah. Marlene uses the same model of pistol as Ellie. I've got a head cannon that it's Ellie's actual pistol. I enjoy the irony of it. It ain't for you to decide. It's what she want. Sadly, Marlene is right. It's what she wanted. The sudden cut to Joel driving is a fun play with the audience for the moments leading up to the reveal that Ellie's in the backseat. And the relief we feel when we see her. Thank God. They've actually... They've stopped looking for a cure. A lie that destroys a beautiful bond for a time. We book in the game as we play as both Sarah and Ellie. I don't think I ever told you, but uh, Sarah and I used to take hikes like this. Joel now is ready to be completely open with Ellie about Sarah. You don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. Notice Joel grabs his watch as he talks about always finding something to fight for. I swear. And that's it, a perfect way to end this game. We open on Sarah's face and we close on Ellie's. And this end credits track is called The Path, A New Beginning. Pretty fitting title, I guess. What is to be said about The Last of Us that hasn't been said already? We all know it's one of the most beautifully crafted stories ever told in the video game medium. It's a game that anyone can enjoy. Even people that don't like games can enjoy this because the story is so human. There's no aliens, no made up phenomenon, and the infection literally exists in the world today. This story brings itself as close as it can to reality, which is why I feel it resonates so much with so many people. The story told here isn't unique. It's been told hundreds of times, but it's all in its execution that makes it so wonderful. Like I always say, keeping things simple makes your story so much more impactful in the end. And focusing the story on two people who have no one left to love was perfect. Because that's what this game is about in the end. Love. What happens to people when they don't have it? What happens when they do? And what they'll go through to achieve it or hold on to it? And lastly, like what we see in the second game, what people will do if they lose it. And this type of story doesn't need to happen in a zombie apocalypse. This type of story can be told under any setting. It's just the stressor of the infected that makes everything we are in our nature come out much faster and more believable than in, say, our civilized society. This is the reason the game became a Hall of Fame classic game of the year, because aren't we all just trying to find love in our life? And being able to play through someone else's journey of love is just so very cathartic. One of my favorite things about the game is Joel's choice in the end. It created such a great conversation among us on whether he was right or wrong. For me, he did the right thing saving her. It just sucks that to do it, he had to kill so many people to get there. And that's the real issue of it all. He was right to save her, but wrong to murder everyone on his way. Or at the very least, Abby's dad. All life is precious, and we all need to have someone to love. And in Joel's wake of his pursuit of love, he took that away from so many people. And sure, you could argue, by Ellie dying, it removes the pain and suffering of the infection for everyone else forever. Maybe but we we're all going to die in the end anyway. And in the event of Ellie's death and the world being saved, at least two people have to endure the, that pain and suffering, and nobody that is good deserves that. Sure, through the infection it may come sooner than it should, but that's life. There are a whole host of things that can cut our life short. It just so happens that there's just this one other thing that can do it as well. Cars could kill us, so we drive the speed limit, have mirrors, and check when we merge. Infected could kill us, so we build walls, have spotters, and work together to eliminate the threat just like we do when we drive, and love one another to build a new life. I understand that there will always be people that can't subscribe to that mindset and want to speed and be reckless, want to kill, rape, and, and take what you have for themselves. And it sucks that that's human nature sometimes, but like Darwin said, it's not the strongest or the smartest creatures that survive, it's the ones most adaptive to change. Marlene couldn't change and accept the world for what it is and learn to love again in this terrible world and wanted to kill Ellie when she didn't have to. A vaccine can only prevent you from getting infected. It won't bring the ones who are gone back. So why kill Ellie when you can just do what I described above? I would love to hear what you guys think about Joel's choice in the end down below. And that's my main takeaway from this game that I wanted to talk about in this conclusion, that even when everything seems like it's falling apart and nothing is right, as long as you have that one someone in your life, it's gonna be okay. And that's the beautiful second part of this game. Ellie and Abby both realize the importance of love and life, and that taking that from someone is one of the worst things you can possibly do to a person. 
So if you're having a tough time right now, look for someone in your life to be your Ellie, to be your Lev. Look for someone that no matter what's happening around you, as long as you got them, you know it's gonna be okay. And one day, if you're not the first to go, understand that that's life. Joel lost his daughter and thought he could never be okay again and didn't want to hurt again. So he basically became a dead man walking until he met Ellie. There will always be someone in this life that can be your okay. And don't think for a second that you can't be that for someone else because you can and you are. The Last of Us is a beautiful story about our ability to change and our ability to love, but it's also about the messy nature of humans and how fallible we can be sometimes. But nothing's beautiful because it's perfect. We certainly aren't. So let me apologize real quick for any of the negative things I might have said in The Last of Us Part 2 video, because I understand that game more now through the examination of this one. To know the ending, you gotta understand the prequel. I love you guys, and I'm so glad to be making videos for you all to enjoy. And if this brought you even an inkling of that, I hope you can give that feeling to somebody else soon too.